Greetings, it's Ian from RTL here, and welcome to a very, very special Saturday with Richard, because it's number 40. It is indeed the 40th video we've done, and we've done equally two on my channel and 38 on yours. <laughs> well, as you said last night, you don't mind that at all. I prefer it, actually. So how anyway, are you, you see, I'm good. Lovely day today here. What's it like? It is very sunny outside as well, so I'll be heading out shortly after this. As you see, we've both dressed up for the week. Well, I put my feather boa on for Mark Boland's sake. And I just so... put on my yeah, <laughs> very glammy sort of shirt. Anyway, as, yeah, as everyone seems to know, we're going to pick our top 20 favourite glam mm. rock songs. People might say, oh, that, that's not glam. But as me and Richard were little kiddie winkies when glam was at its peak, we should know what glam is and what isn't. And maybe some controversial ones in here. But, guys, you've got to remember, when we were growing up, we loved these songs. That's the main thing, yeah. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it's not the person or the... It's the song that brings back our memories, and that's what this is about, songs and memories. I have I've only got three bubbling unders because most of mine are in the thing, <laughs> and my bubbling unders are actually ones that people might say, well, that's not really glam rock. Well, I've got about six, but another thing is that we said only three songs per artist. I haven't gone above two. Actually, I've only done two songs. So there's songs that should be in there, uh, aren't in there, but I just didn't want to make it all the same artists throughout. So yeah, no, we could have we could have been there till the the cows yeah. come home, really. I know. Do you want to start off then? Okay. Twenty songs. Okay. Well, as Ian says, glam rock. I was a kid. Whenever glam rock was at its peak in 1973, was really the peak year for glam rock and um, i remember all these acts and top of pops and i loved them and i loved hearing radio one in the morning before going to school and so forth and hearing all this so some of these um probably aren't glam but they're very glam influenced and the first one at number 20 he's not a glam artist at all but he has a bit of a glam sound and it's all the stardust and my cuckoo and a number two hit from the start of 74 it was released in 1973 now it was written and sung by pete shelley so the recording you hear is not actually elvin stardust pete shelley so it was recorded before uh, it became a hit and when it became a hit they had to get somebody to more or less mime to it and it was uh bernard jury or what shane fenton or whichever name he wanted to call himself and the next single, Jealous Mind, was Alvin Stardust. But I think it's a great track. I loved it when I was a kid. Never had the single when I was a kid, but it was taped off AM Radio 01. <laughs> so it was. And that's the only version we I had for years. And it's my number 20. I love it. No glam. Uh, you wore leather. But uh, fantastic track. Yeah, it is one of them songs. It was the gloves and the, and the, yeah. the black gloves and the ring giving it all that one it is yeah i mean i i, love, I haven't put that one in because I, but i'm glad it's there because it should be it's part of our growing up what a great start okay i'm going to start controversial Good my number 20 now this is from 1972 now this version of the song was the b side because the a side was the vocal version and it's by someone we can't really talk about but the music of this is done by the glitter band and it's rock and roll part two the only vocal bit is the where hey hi hey on the bit that i like but as i say it's rock and roll part two performed by the glitter band mm -hmm. and i just love it i still do I i'm sorry i think it's great you're actually wrong the the vocal part two was the a side the, oh. the non-vocal part two was actually the a side and the vocal part was the b side it's actually rock and roll parts two and one so that, um, way around, that, way. that way around yeah 
Uh, yeah, it's, it's part of my childhood as well. And I will say I do have a Gary Glitter one in this, even though he's a despicable man. I, I'm including one. But my number 19, and you may think this is actually very low, but it's Mott the Hoople and All the Young Dudes. And the reason I have it a bit low is because I don't remember it at the time. I do love it. It's a David Bowie song written for them, and I think it is absolutely brilliant. It was number three in 1972. But I don't think it's their best single. And I will say there is another one in my top uh, 20. But it's, it's the song that revived Mott the Hoople. And you know, they got great success after that because they were about to uh, split up and David Bowie had offered them Suffragette City and they said no. And they waited out for all young dudes. And it is a really, really good version, but it's still only 19. I think it's great, but number 19. I haven't put that in. All right. Okay. I forgot about it. All right. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's a great song. It's a and uh, it did, it revitalised Mott the Hoople. Okay, my number 19, it's probably my favourite glam band. And, uh, but, but then it was hard not to, I could have put a whole bunch of these in. It's Slade, mm -hmm. of course. But the one, one of the, it's one of them singles that everyone sort of forgets about. And he got to number three in 1974. And it's The Banging Man. I just think that is... That is one of the singles that really represents what the album side of Slade are. Yeah. And I think that's why I've chose it, because everyone loves, you know, my friend Stan and all that. But this was the Banging Man was just a good rocker from a glam band. And it's still one of my favorite songs by Slade. Oh, great standalone single as well. Fantastic B-side and she did it to me, which was valid, but it was Beautiful song. Really, really good choice. Well, my number 18 is the Gary Glitter pick, and it's Do You Want to Touch Me? From 1973, got to number two. I think it's just a brilliant song. He is an absolute tosser, but it's a brilliant song. But I must say that I actually prefer Joan Jett's version, which she did on her Bad Reputation album. And there was another Gary Glitter song I was thinking, I Love You, Love Me, Love. And Joan Jett also does that on her uh, Glorious Days of Miss yes, she does. She does a fine version of it. A brilliant version. So I'd be happy enough if you even put in at number 18, the Joan Jett version, because I actually do prefer it. But I have to say, um, I do not like to revise history. History is history. And I loved the Gary Glitter singles whenever I was a kid. And to be honest with you, I still do love them. I find it hard to listen to now knowing what he was like and i actually did see him live believe it or not so have and i so it, you know i saw him on the end of the road i think people got to realize when me and richard were going growing up we were you know leader of the gang would come on and you know as a seven six and seven year old kids we would go around going come on come on and i know there's people that but you know you've got to uh, appreciate that we was very young mm -hmm. at the time and we was getting into music Anyway, and to be honest, yeah, he just deserves and um, let him rot in prison. But that's yes, the way that exactly. Is. Okay, my number 18 is a song that my cousin's a year older than me, and mm -hmm. she got this single, and it's 1973, got to number three, and it's The Bump by Kenny. I absolutely love this. <laughs> it's just um, that it's cheesy as you like. But it's that's what glam rock was cheesy, yeah. and it's just I remember seeing this on top of the pops, and I do believe they he, these went on Mark Boland's show and done it as well, or Bay so, City Rollers show, and it was yeah, just absolutely brilliant. Did you know that the Bay City Rollers also recorded the bump? It was the yeah. B side of All of Me Loves All of You. But no, a great choice. I love their single. I actually have a Kenny album. It's got a big yeah, I've, I've got the bump single. I mean, I didn't pick it up until a year ago as a record sale, a record fair for 50 pence, and it was the best buy of the day. <laughs> you see, that to me is the glam influence ones, and I have a couple of those as well. But oh, no, fantastic choice. You know, I forgot about Kenny. Well, my number 17 is not really a glam band. 
But this is a very glam sound, and it's from 1974. And it's one of my favourite artists, and it's Sparks. And I've gone for amateur R rather than this town ain't big enough for the both of us. Because whenever I was eight years old, I actually bought the amateur R single. It's also on Kimono My House. I think it's catchy as hell. And I think maybe this town has been played out a little bit too much for me. And I still get those goosebumps when I hear amateur R. And I still, still remember going back to whenever I was eight years old and putting that little island single on the record player and uh, something completely different. But they didn't look glam because I think Ron had like um, a tank top on or something like that there. But the sound did have a glam sound to it. Uh, it gets in at number 17 for me. Yeah, I like that yeah. song as well. Um, and Kimono My House is that it's it is a when you listen to it, even today, you go, This is real glam rock. And it was the Sparks band as well. It wasn't yeah. just Russell and Ron. Exactly. It's a great choice. I really like this. Okay, my number 17. Now, do you call this band a glam round? I do because of the way they dress. And it's something that we lost very, very not yeah, so long man. ago. From 1975, it was a number one. And if I just say, make me smile, mm. it's the one uh, Steve Carley and Company Rep. And I love that song. One of the best singles ever released. Now, I didn't include it. Um, I do have a Steve Harley and Cockney Rebel in my bubbling wonders because for that time I thought maybe going past the glam. But you know, I'm glad it is actually included because the song is absolutely amazing. It's a perfect song, it really is a perfect song. And God rest Steve Harley. Yeah, I mean, what I think I you know, all I remember the visions of him with his. Like you got yours on, he'd got a black, he wear with that black one and the eyes, and he was yes. so he looked so glam. And it is, it's a classic, and I cannot not put him in somewhere in this um top 20. Right, right. Well, my number 16, you don't think of as a glam group, but actually, they were quite glammy in 73 and especially 74 when we first heard of them, and it's ABBA. <laughs> Of course, I forget about it. And it's so long. It's a, a single that um, was the first single off their ABBA album. And it failed a chart, but it is the um, second song after Waterloo. And it's a really good glam rocker. And I think it's better than Waterloo. And for some reason, it never charted at all. It's their only single not to chart since the waterloo uh, was issued so they weren't having huge success at that time but it's a great great track and you actually look at the way benny and uh, bjorn are all dressed they're they're dressed in glammy clothes and then the girls just rock out to it and i think it's absolutely brilliant and it gets my number 16. yeah first time i heard that was on that greatest hits album that very first yeah. remember that greatest hits album i remember you know dad getting it and on this track on me, I thought, wow. And you're right. I mean, Bjorn has got the boots on. He's got a glam, his guitar is in a star, like in the, the, the glitter band style thing. So, yeah, I think that that song is very glam rock. And it is one, it's one of my favorite songs by ABBA. Always has been. I just think it's a great track. What a great choice. Okay, my number 16. I remember seeing this on top of the box and it totally blew me away. With his big hair, his stars round his face, and the band were just absolutely nutty. So we're talking about Wizard mm -hmm. and See My Baby Jive, my favourite yeah. song by Wizard, without a doubt. It's another classic. But that, you know, he was playing what a flugelhorn on the top mm -hmm. of the box. You know, <laughs> they were just mad as a box of frogs, the whole lot of them. And as you mentioned in your video last week, the singles were so much different to what he did in the albums. Some of the albums were like Wizard Brew is actually quite a rock, jazzy type album. It is. It's a great album. The singles borrowed so much from Phil Spector. It was a case of throwing absolutely everything into the song, including the kitchen sink. 
And um, oh, absolutely brilliant choice. I won't say much more about that because it may be coming up. Yes. My number 15 is a band that looks more like Teddy Boys. But this song has got a real good guitar, glammy riff to it, and it's by Mud, and it's Dynamite. And it was a single in 73, and it got to 1970, or got to number four. And um, the riff of it is absolutely brilliant, and the whole feel of it is glam rock, even though Les Gray, you know, he had the crepes and drapes on him, and your old boy Rob Davis, he was quite glammy with big earrings and the massive big flares. But it's a fantastic song. It's not as what you would call sort of, it's not the Tiger Feet or the Cat Crep Bin type mud. It is a more rocky track, and it was believed, I don't know if this is true or not, it was initially offered to Sweet. Some people are saying that's not the case, but that's what I heard. And, it's written um, by Mickey Chin, isn't it? Oh, uh, well, it's Mick Chapman. Um, oh, Chapman, Mick Chapman, sorry, yeah. But um, an absolutely brilliant track, and it got to number four in the charts. Um, fantastic. It's my number 15. Um, I'll not say too much on that. Because that's... Okay. okay, my number 15. I've really cheated here. <laughs> because it's three songs in one. <laughs> and he appeared on a B-side of a little track called Get It On. Oh, very good, yes. Very good. So it's There Was a Time, Raw Ramp, and Electric Boogie by T-Rex. And I could not I could not do that without putting that in. Okay, I thought it's three songs, but they're just, it's just it rolls into one. It's all on one side. Thank you very much. That's one song. <laughs> but it is that, good. It, that side is better than Get It On. So it is. I think so. Get It On is a classic single, but the B-side is the best B-side ever. It was never put on an album. Apart from yeah, Raw Ramp is just great. I mean, when I saw that T-Rex show, they opened up with that. Oh. He came on stage, so there's the time, and then went straight to Raw Ramp. I mean, what more, you know, my, my evening was fulfilled in song one, and that's why it's my number 15. Great choice. Well, my number 14 is Alice Cooper, as in the Alice Cooper band. And the number six hit in 1973, and it's Hello, Hooray. I just think it's a brilliant glam rock type track. I don't think it was written by Alice Cooper. Um, I'm not too sure who it was written by, but by far it's my favorite Alice Cooper song. And it's from the Billion Dollar Babies album, I think it was actually. And uh, yeah, brilliant track. I always loved it. And although most of my acts are British, there's a couple of Americans in there, and Alice Cooper is one of them. Yeah, I love that track. It's one of the highlights of the album. Okay, my number 14 is one of them bands that gets forgotten about. And I do believe it was mentioned on our very first video. 1974 got to number eight. Touch too much the arrows. All right, okay, yeah. People say, is that glam? Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, it's from around that period, yeah. It's influenced by glam. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's always forgotten about. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. No, I like it. I, I don't think I included that in my favourite Chin and Chapman songs. So it might have been a bubbling under. But uh, no, it's a good track. And of course, he's the Alan Merrill's the guy that wrote "I Love Rock and Roll." Yeah, that's his most famous song, actually, and nobody knows about it apart, you know, apart from the Joan Jett version and the Britney Spears version and whoever else did it. Yeah, but, but people like you, knew, it, knew it was Britney Spears. Oh, a very good choice. Well, my number thirteen is my other American, and it's a young lady from Detroit. I think she's from Detroit. Uh, it's Susie Quattro and 48 Crash, which is another Chin and Chapman song. So that's three in a row we've mentioned. And this is great. This is absolutely great. It's actually quite long. It's over four and a half minutes long. And um, it was the follow-up to Can the Can, which is another great song, but I've always preferred 48 Crash. And she's just letting it rip. 
and she looks like the female Alvin Stardust and all leather and all the rest of it. But she did it first. She did it before Alvin. But um, yeah, brilliant track. Uh, Love Susie Quattro, and it's one of my favourite songs of hers. And it's my number thirteen. Got to number three in nineteen seventy three. Well, I'm glad you've put that one in because I was tossing and turning. So, in a funny way, th three songs that I wanted to put, and I went down to two because I wanted to put something else in, and that was the one I threw away. All right, so, okay. I'm glad it's in there because it is. It, it is a great song. Uh, it just brings back so many memories of, of mm -hmm. that period. Of, you know at school and you know we loved Susie at school we thought she was oh, great everybody, everybody loved Susie <laughs> yeah. okay my number 13 is one that you've already mentioned mm -hmm. it's dynamite I'm not going to say too much about it but it's everything you said about it and mm -hmm. what you said about Mud is absolutely right Ron's I mean who remembers him wearing the Christmas baubles as earrings I mean <laughs> Yeah, well, that's it. I know, God. Oh, and, a, and, a, and a pair of trousers that look more like a long evening gown. You know? <laughs> exactly, I know. You couldn't tell whether it was a dress or actually trousers. No, but it was brilliant. It's a, it's a great song, and uh, it, it definitely needs to be in it. And it's, it must be that good because we both chose it. Well, my number 12, and we're keeping on the Mike Chapman songs here. Uh, it's uh, Ballroom Blitz by The Sweet. With are you ready, Steve? Andy, yeah, make okay. Let's let's go, fellas. Blah 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 blah. Oh, brilliant! Great drums in the intro, fantastic chorus, catchy as hell. And uh, number two in 1973. Now the sweet were so unlucky; they had five number two hit singles and only the one number one. But Ballroom Blitz, absolutely brilliant. And uh, that's my number twelve. Yeah. Um... I'm glad that one's in there because I did, I could have put loads of Sweet in. You know, Sweet are probably my second favourite glam band. So I'm glad it's in there because it is great. That drumming for Mick at the Big Ring is just great. Okay, my number 12 is uh, from 1973. Ziggy Stardust, David Bowie and the Spider. Oh, okay. and the yeah. Very good. I love that track. It's just that great little Mick Ronson guitar at the beginning. And the bass line from Trevor is just, mm -hmm. it's just a classic. And I love that song. I am glad that you went the non, uh, included non singles. I didn't. I just went all singles, but I wish I had of now. But no, that's a very, very good choice. And that is pure glam rock, really. That's. Probably, if you wanted to find glam rock, you could say Ziggy Stardust. Yeah, I mean, the Bauhaus did a great version of it, the Northampton band. Yeah, I remember that. Are they from Northampton? I don't know that. Yeah, they're from Northampton. Oh, okay. Bauhaus. 1982 as well. Yeah. They didn't change much. They did a more of a very, uh, they stuck to the, the formula for that one. But... Yeah, the lead, the, the lead singer apparently was a big Bowie fan, and that's why he done it. No, they did telegram some as well. Yeah. Well, my number 11 is Baby, Baby, Baby. And it is Slade. And it's the first of the Slade entries for me. And it is Come On, Feel The Noise. And to me, this is pure glam rock. And I remember even in primary school on the playground, singing away to that with my friends. It was number one on the charts. And we always thought it was um, very um, naughty. Girls grab the boys. Now, I'm only seven, eight years old or whatever it was. And I always thought, oh, those very naughty. <laughs> oh, girls, yuck. That sort of, sort of thing. <laughs> but it's a fantastic track. And obviously, it's been covered by Quiet Riot, which I think is terrible. And the uh, Oasis did it. And I think they did quite a decent job of it. Yeah, they, they did a better version of uh, Quiet Riot. Yeah, I remember singing that at school. And we got told off. Yeah. Because we <laughs> Girls grab them. <laughs> we loved it though. Yeah, it's, it is. It's one of it, it. It's one of them songs that when you say, when people say, "What's glam rock?" Go and listen to that. That'll just uh, give you the, the. Okay, my number eleven is that lady from uh, Detroit. Oh, good. 
Glad she's on there. And it's her number one from 1973. Can the can. I mean, I love the clips of her doing it now when she stands with the drummer and they do a little drumming thing. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, she's just, she can still sing it as with the same guts as she did in 73. Mm -hmm. And there's a great clip of her and Andy Scott doing it on YouTube. He comes out and see, he plays guitar as well. It's great to see them, two of the great glam rock stars of the 70s, still good friends and still delivering the goods. Yeah, I know. What can you say? It was one of the highlights I saw in concerts. Uh, it must be now nine years ago. And it was one of the highlights of the concert. She is very good in concert, let me tell you. She is good, and she gets that crowd up off the seats. She's not having you sitting down on that seat when can the can's on. You have to get up. Uh, it's really good fun. We're getting into the top ten here, and you've mentioned this already, and it's uh, See My Baby Jive by Wizard. Number one hit single in 1973. Absolutely brilliant. As I said, everything is put into this record. It is quite long as well. It's nearly five minutes long, but it is superb. And if you watch them on top of the pops with the purple hair or the multicolored hair, and as you say, the big star on it, it's just completely wacky and um, absolutely brilliant. And my number 10. Can't say more than that. It's just great. Okay, my number 10 is a band that I mentioned at my number 20, but this is one of their own songs. And it is so glam, and it's the brilliant Angel Place from 1974. Mm -hmm. Got to number four. The double drum at the beginning. The lyric, it's catchy. It's just one of my favourite songs by Glitter Band. I won't say if it is my favourite, because I am going to do a retro ranking on the Glitter Band. So it, you can guarantee that's in the top ten. Yeah, I love that as well. It didn't get in. Um it was even go, it was going to be in the bubbling numbers, but that bloody many, I thought it better not. But uh, the Outcasts uh, band from Belfast, punk band from Belfast, recorded that and had a single with it in 1983. And it's not a bad version either, but nothing beats the Glitter Band original. Well, my number nine, and it's a band I've already mentioned, so this is their second and final entry. And it's ABBA again, and this time it's Ring Ring. Now, if you watch the video for Ring Ring, the, the guys are really glammed up and the girls are glammed up and it does have a glam feel to it. It was released in 73 and did nothing at all. And then when Waterloo won the Eurovision Song Contest, it was then the follow-up to Waterloo. But what they did was they uh, slightly slowed it down a little bit and put a little bit of sax in it. It's not as good as the original version, but it is a top 10 ABBA single for me absolutely love it and um, I had to get into my top 10 not even the top 20 I had to get into the top 10 glam singles that's my number nine yeah I yeah. like that I mean I obviously the version on the greatest hits is the single version but I when I did my album ranking of uh, ABBA all them many many moons ago I actually borrowed someone to okay, let me lent me their box set you know they had brought all them albums out on cd and when i heard that i went wow this is a lot better mm -hmm. i always like the song but the sax spoiled it and as you said it was it didn't need it because it is a great song what a great they, song. they actually remixed it again for the american market and put even more sax on it and it's unlistenable so it is you know, I've only played it about twice because it completely destroys it, but that's a different story. Okay, it's my turn, isn't it, after all that? Yeah, we'll get... Okay, my number nine is the second entry from T-Rex for me. Number two, in 1971, it's Jeepster. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. have to have, I have to have that on. Uh, I just love that song. Yeah, so do I. But yeah, never saw uh, Mark do it, of course, but I saw a great cover version on it. And my mate Lee is not a big fan of fish, but when he heard, mm -hmm. when I played him his version of Jeepster, he said it's probably one of the best covers of that song he's ever heard. And that's mm -hmm. saying something because, I mean, Fish was a huge Mark Boland fan. 
and uh, it's nice that he, he did a, did that version did that song justice but i just love mark's uh vocal in that it's just that little tongue and cheek it's a great track it really is and it was never meant to be a single he didn't want it to be a single uh, but he'd moved uh record labels from fly to emi and fly just released it and he's happy enough to promote it like but he didn't want it to be a single but it's a fantastic track and altered images actually do a different version of it it's not bad it's, it's completely different yes well my number eight is the second time i mentioned this band and it's Mott the hoople again and it's roll away the stone from 1973 and i just love it it's a fantastic track it's just a really really good song i love the female backing vocals there's a party going on on saturday night sort of thing uh, it's just really really good catchy chorus everything's perfect about it got to number eight so it did well but it deserved to do far more than that uh, it was the first single to be released from their Mo album no sort of the hoople album uh, which came out in 74 but yeah, great track, Roll Away the Stones, my number eight. That was one of my redundants, so I'm going to think of another one as we're talking. Right, okay. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I can't say any more about that one, really. It is, you've said everything about it. So yeah, what a great choice. Okay, my number eight. Um, I remember see, the first time I saw this, um, I was five four or five years old so i wasn't very old but it made such an impact on me on top of the pops 1972 number four for roxy music virginia plain good choice very good choice uh i i i was just mesmerized even as a, i can still remember it now the first time i saw brian ferry and that mm -hmm. vocal wow and the piano and brian eno looking yeah what a strange character he was in 72 I and i just love how it ends virginia clean yes mm -hmm. oh, that was yeah. great brilliant i can't say anything about it though no so we shall move on yes so my number seven if i go this here to you will you know what it is <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. One of the yeah. best riffs ever written for me is 20th Century Boy by T Rex. I think it was great. And it's supposedly his last really, really big hit single, although I like the Groover every bit as much. But uh, 20th Century Boy is actually cracking track. And your woman, uh, Susie, covered that as well. I don't know if you've heard the Susie and the Banshees yeah. version. Oh, I have, and I love it. <laughs> it's actually not bad. I have to give that. It's not bad. But uh, crack and riff, loads of sax, everything everything thrown in that track as well. And uh, But it was the start of the decline. It only got to number three whenever his last um, eight singles either got to number one or number two. And this is the first one that just missed out in the top two. 1973, March, brilliant track. And it's by number seven. Um, I won't say much more on that because that may come up later. Okay. Okay. Um, this next one, the band's been mentioned already, and it's the first for me. It's my The Wonderful Sweet, a number two hit from 74, Teenage Rampage. Oh, very good indeed. Another yeah. Chid and yeah. Dan song. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't a teenage, but you felt like this was a song for the youth, the teenage rampage. Yeah, it was a big family favourite, you know. Look, I had a cousin that was into the same sort of thing, you know, the glam rock, and she, you know, she had, you know, been my big cousin. <laughs> yeah, she, we used to sit and listen to all these singles because her mum worked in for co-op in the record department of co-op my auntie mm -hmm. so we was get we had all these singles to appear and we, you know we'd go, you'd go up there on a saturday and you'd sit on a little in her bedroom with a little thing and blaring out this all these hit songs of the time absolutely fantastic and that was one of them 
jumping up and down, back, you know, like like you do when you're six and seven. The thing about Teenage Rampage is, you know, I would love to have included that, but there's so many sweet singles that, you know, and I, I said to myself, only two per artist. And so my number six is a sweet one, and it's Hellraiser. And I think it is my favourite sweet single. And Hellraiser is as heavy as hell. So it is. It really is. The guitars are really riffing in it. And um, the follow-up, the blockbuster, I've always preferred Hellraiser. Number two, again, in 1973, brilliant track. And it's got that weird uh, Stevie Priest vocal in the middle as well, the way he did with Blockbuster. But I've always had a preference for Hellraiser, and it's my number six. Yeah, I love that track as well. I think it's the best Andy, one of his yeah. best riffs. And Stevie um, Priest's bass line on that, when you put that on the headphones, it's a real... <laughs> He's really going for it. And then you put your silly vocal on it and it just makes it a, a great little track. I think it's um, their most forgotten big hit. Yeah, I quite agree with that. It is just a great song. Okay, my number six. You've mentioned the band and you went from the other single that was on Kimono. And I've, oh, gone, I have had to go for... This town ain't big enough for the both of us, purely because it was the first thing I ever heard by Sparks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I won't say what my granddad said about Ron. <laughs> Imagine. Yes. I mean, he said it in a, because, you know, it was, it was on top of the pops and was down my nan's, and he said something. And when my nan disapproved, she, she would rustle the paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, he just said, he made a comment about the moustache. Yes, and it wasn't Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> I we all thought it was funny, except my nan. And she uh, just went. And his name was everyone knew him as Jim, but his his name was James. And he went. She went. I James. suppose if you, if you think about it, you, you can understand because he was from that era whenever that yeah. individual was gone. So you can you can understand it, but you know everyone. I can remember seeing Ron for the first time and almost being scared, even looking at him. Yeah, that. I know. You know well, it, was the eyes, it was just the eyes, didn't it? Just moving. And... No, he, was, no. he still is freaky. He still sort of scares me. But yeah, but tough. he's such a clever man. Oh, he's the genius behind those two. Yeah, he is. You know, he's he's a, 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 you know, long live Ron. <laughs> well, my number five and um, it's David Bowie, a star man, 1972, number 10. And funny enough, I can't remember this being in the charts. I cannot remember it at all. And I only first really heard it in 1980 when I bought the Ziggy album. But um, I've seen the Top of Pop's appearance, you know, on rerun so many times. But I just think it's a brilliant song. And it's the one that really did bring Bowie success. Okay, he had a big hit in 69 with Space Holiday, but he couldn't follow it up. Well, I think he did follow up quite well with certain songs, but the the uh, public were not interested until Starman, and he showed that Ziggy persona, which a year later, it went really weird, because he doesn't look that weird on the top of the pops. His hair is still quite short, but whenever it gets longer, pure orange, and he's got a big thing there on his yeah. forehead. You know, but yeah, brilliant, brilliant track. Uh, that's my number five. Yeah, I think you've. It's, it is a great track and uh, one of my favourite so songs. And I mean, that's my favourite period of David anyway. That you know, the the seventies. It's uh, one of them songs that you don't mind hearing, although it gets, it gets played a lot. But I don't mind it because it's just that good. Okay, my number five. It's a glam band, but this is not a. A glam song, and right. I couldn't not. And it's from Slade, and it's my favourite Slade song, and it's from Slade in Flame. It's far, far away. Right. It's such a well constructed song, highly melodic, but not sickening melodic. It's just yeah. a beautiful, beautiful song. And I just love the the video they made for it with them in the white suits walking. You know. It, it, is, it is my, you know, of all the great tracks they have ever released and recorded, yeah. 
that one yeah. sits at the top of the pile every time. I don't yeah. know why. It's just one of them great songs, and I remember it so vividly. That you know, is it's cool. That's one of Don Pyle's favorite Slade songs. In fact, he also liked "Standing in the Corner" from that album as well, which is a great track too. But well, my number four you've already mentioned, and it's uh, uh, "Baby Jeans in Acapulco." We all flag down to Rio, <laughs> and it's Virginia playing Roxy music, brilliant. I nearly picked "Pajama Rama" because I had "Pajama Rama" as a single when I was a kid as well. I bought some pretty good songs when I was about seven. But no, Virginia playing is just absolutely classic. And I agree with you. I love the way it ends with the, the title. That's the only time in the song you hear that. What's her name? Virginia playing. Brilliant track. Didn't get on the debut album, although I think it did for the American market. But um, it's now on the Roxy Music CD, the um, original album. But um, fantastic track, number four, 72. Oh, that's my number four. Okay, um, my number four is my second entry from the lady from Detroit. And number one, again, from 1974. And you all want to come down on the tailgate try. <laughs> oh, wow. I, want you, I want you to get up and do the little dance. I can't do it. Not in this shirt. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm quite... Doesn't really fit me now. I mean, if I do that, I'll do a PJ Proby, but with a shirt. So I'm not doing any dancing. But yeah, I could do the dance. I'm I mean, sure you could at school. <laughs> that when that was number one, I uh, that, you know we would sing it all the time. And there's a guy I still see from time to time, and we always talk about Susie Quattro's Devil Gate Drive. <laughs> Come on, hey! Oh, just another time for Susie. Any time for Susie. <laughs> oh, great choice. I had an idea you would actually pick that one because I thought, well, oh, he's picked Can the Can. I wonder if he'll do Give, Devil Get Drive. Oh, he does, and I'm glad. Well, my number three is my favourite Slade single, and it's Goodbye to Jane. I just think it's brilliant. I love the drums at the start. Um, I say, you're so young, you're so young. It's just glam rock to the T. It's catchy, it's got a stump to it, and it doesn't get sickening. It's got a really, really good riff. It only got to number two in the charts. I'm not too sure what kept it off. It was near the end of 72 whenever that came out because it was still in the charts in January of 73. But um, absolutely brilliant track from the Slade album. And it should have been number one, but it's my number three. Yeah, there was something about there were some great glam drummers. Yeah, with Don Powell, Mick Tucker, they were the I think the heaviest drummers. Yeah, don't forget Cozy Powell as well. You could nearly call him glam. Yeah, with the, the devil. Yes. Maybe okay. My number three is my second entry for Mud, and it was another number one from seventy four. So many great songs in seventy three, seventy four, and I couldn't leave this out. It's Tiger Feet. And yes, I can do the Tiger Feet dance as well. Yeah. I just love that song. Is it glam? Is it rock and roll? It's, uh, it's a bit of both. So it is. Yeah. And it, it, everyone loves it. I mean... Do you know, do you know Ian, I always say that uh, the best way to define glam is with one word. And it's fun. And if you define it as fun... Tiger Feet is definitely glam, man. It's a great song. I just love it. Wow. You know, every time it gets played on the radio. Yep. <laughs> right. My number two is my second David Bowie entry. And I'm going to go with Drive In Saturday. Yes, it's slightly slower. Well, I just think it's such a really good track. It is a throwback to the 50s, which in effect, glam rock was. It was taking 50s rock and roll and glamming it up. And I just think it's a brilliant track. And to me, this is David Bowie's most forgotten about big hit because it did get to number three in 1973. 
I was going to include Life on Mars, but I thought maybe it's mm, a little bit more less glam. But Driving Saturday is such a good track. It's my favourite song off Aladdin C and one of my all time favourite albums. And I guess my number two. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And it is forgotten about. But mm. uh, when uh, Def Leppard did their Oh Yeah album, which was all their sort of songs that influenced. Mm. You thought they'd have gone for Ziggy Stardust or something like that. No, they went for that. Mm. It's their David Bowie track, and I was so pleased because it's it's so forgotten. For, and the Def Leppard do a, a very good version of it. It's probably one of the best covers on that album. That oh, they did. It's just a brilliant, brilliant track. And, uh, yeah, it deserved to be up there because it is a great track. It's fun. It's a fun song, and you know it comes under glam for me. Okay, my number two. You've already mentioned it, and it's that one with that great ding ding it. Boom, twentieth century boy. Ah, yeah. It's not more It's just absolutely brilliant. Fantastic song and a fantastic riff. Everything about it is so good. Yeah, Placebo and, uh, did a version of it, didn't they, as well? They did, they did a version of it on their own, and they did a version of it with David Bowie, and it's actually quite good as well. Yeah, the, you, know. you know, but that riff, everybody likes doing that riff. I mean, you go and see bands in pubs, and everyone does 20th Century Boy. Yeah. Right, my number one. And it's argued that this is the one that started it all off. And it is Mr. Mark Bowen and T-Rex again as Hot Love. I just think it's a brilliant, brilliant song. And um, it wasn't intended to be a glab song. But um, is it Conchita was the the um, makeup artist that put a little uh, teardrop on Mark's eye whenever he performed it on Top of the Pops. And that's what everyone was talking about, is that little glitter teardrop. And glam rock was born. That is... The story that goes around, I don't know if that's 100% true, but it's a brilliant song. And yes, it is influenced by Hatred with the la 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 instead of the na na na's and so forth. But it's such a catchy song, and it does go on and on and on and on. And I could let it go on for another five minutes with those la la la's. I just absolutely love it, absolutely love it. And it's the number one glam rock song for me. Yeah, it, it to me that was the very first glam rock song as well. Um, and I mean, when when, when we went to see T Rex, the the crowd just love it, and it, it, it basically he everyone just stopped on stage and um, two or three minutes we were just la 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 la, <laughs> and the and the and the fans love it. It, it is, it's a big fan favorite, and uh, yeah, what a great number one. I didn't put it yeah. in mine because I had this funny feeling that would turn up on yours. Well, I know what your number one is now. <coughs> on the not... <laughs> okay, it sounds like Gene Genie, as we keep saying. <coughs> Excuse me. But Blockbuster but just... I prefer That's Blockbuster. Sweet song I physically remember. I can remember Wigwam Bam, the one before. Yeah, I, I sort of remember that, but this is the one that made me, a bit, and it's all down to Steve Priest. Exactly. Yeah, and I will put that I'm going to still, I'm going to put the video where he does his... <laughs> change. He's going from his glitter trousers to his denims. Exactly. <laughs> what can you say about that song? The kettle drums from yep. Nick, bubba da bum, bubba da bum. Stevie Priest, we haven't got a clue what yeah. to do. Uh, Brian yeah. is just on fire. It just means that the world to me, that song, it just sums up my glam. It's, it is, it's glammy. Everything about that song is glam. Uh, number one in early 73. Early 73, yeah. Well, that was great. Now, do you want me to go through my bubbling wonders? Yeah, and I found I thought of one in the head. <laughs> right. I've, okay. First one, 
1974, number 13, Mungo Jerry, long-legged woman dressed in black, dressed in black, dressed in black, dressed in black. Oh, black, I forgot black. about that one. That's a great one. Uh, I really like that. Wizard, number one, Angel Fingers, another fantastic song with everything in it as well. And then I have decided to put in a Cockney Rebel one, which is not very glammy, but if you look at the cover of the album, they are all glammed up. And it's Sebastian by Cockney. Cockney Rebel. I think it's a brilliant track. Oh, favorite song, boy. Oh, yeah, brilliant song. Now this one, these next two. No, I'll do this one first. Well, the next three actually, you'll say those aren't glam. But well, number two hit in 1972. It's got a really glam sound to it, but they don't look glam. And it's the Osmonds' Crazy Horses. And it's got a really glammy rock track or uh, guitar sound to it. That's absolutely brilliant. Elton John, who was very glammy, but this one, Rocket Man, wasn't a glam sound, but it's getting in the bubbling unders. It would actually be in my top 10, really, but because it doesn't have the glam sound, even though he was dressed like Dia Medna Average, at the time, it gets in as a bubbling under. And one that you'll probably disagree with, Queen, Keep Yourself Alive from 73. I think they had a bit of a glam look about them. They were more rock, but I do think that they were influenced a little bit by the glam sound, especially with Freddie Mercury calling himself Freddie Mercury. That there in itself is a glam influence because he was Larry Lyrics just before that. Yeah, that would have got him anyway. I know. <laughs> What I thank goodness he used L instead of D instead of Dari Jurix. <laughs> I quite agree with you. That song is probably the most glamorous song they ever did. You know, they would they would do in them early. If you listen to them to day, you know, the debut and the Queen too. There's a lot of glam and prog on that. That they I know and uh, I love "Keep Yourself Alive." I think it's oh, brilliant. I love it. I didn't want to put it in the top 20 because there it is not quite that glammy, but there is an influence there as with the Elton and the Osmonds' Crazy Horses. And now you probably laugh at the Osmonds, but that's a cracking good song. Oh, track. I love that song as well. No, good it's good brilliant. Stuff. Okay, my first one. We've mentioned his name as a great drummer. Cozy 1973, Mr. Cozy Powell and Dance with the Devil. Yeah, that's glam to me. Yeah, everything about do you, it. Do you know that um, Boney M used that Dance with the Devil drum uh, riff for their Night Flight to Venus? It's exactly the same. If you ever, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it's just a great song. My second one. Well, are they glam or are they rock and roll? The Rubex. Oh, sugar baby love. Yeah, is that influenced? Yeah. Influenced by it's a little bit like Shawadi Wadi as well. Yeah, yeah. Influenced by it. Yeah, it's fun. It's yeah. You know, I their look was you know white suits, glam. It's all... My next one is Shangalang. I was yeah that's post glam and yes i can understand where it's that's coming from it under because it's still got yeah. that it does it's, it's influenced by it yeah and the one that i've another one i've thought of and i think i should put this because i was talking to lee about this sailor a glass of champagne is it pop is it glam but it's fun it's fun i would i would not put that as glam, I don't think. No, there's so many because you could then bring in Pilot as well uh, with Magic yeah. and January and stuff like that. Yeah, so and, that's why I put it in the bubbling. I love the song, and um, that's why it's gone in the bubbling unders because I'm not quite sure about it. But there's something about that 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 the way they dress and it's all very camp and uh, fun. That's really bizarre because the piano that it's not a piano it's more like a <laughs> ornament of some sort isn't it it's like a glass that's a brilliant song glass of champagne i also love girls 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 as well yeah. I love that. 
fantastic too. Anyway, that has been fun. It's one of the long ones, but as it is a celebration, I'm, I'm going to have to put everything in it. It's going to be a huge yeah, list, yeah, but I think if you, for those of you that are not into glam, you're going to, there's going to be some great songs in there. And as we've, well, some of them the same, it'll make it, it's just a celebration of glam rock today. Yeah. Okay, uh, this has been a great fun again, hasn't it, Richard? I love the river of it. Really yeah, nice. um, as we said, the next I've got a problem here with the camera, so this will be short and sweet. Uh, next what time we're going to do uh, another of your requests music from soundtracks and movies that have appeared into them. So, thank you very much for watching. And it only gives one thing to say before this blows up on us it's goodbye for me, and it's goodbye from him. Yes, it's the right round. Thank you very much for that. Bye for now. All right.